Hi, I am Rhonda Marcotte. I am the chef and owner of Flash in the Pan Personal Chef Service, and I'm also a member of Muse Cincinnati's Women's Choir, who are a member of Community Shares. I am entering into my 15th season as a singing member, and we are coming into, I believe it's Muse's 36th season. I'm embarrassed that I don't know that better, but at any rate, we've been around a very long time in the greater Cincinnati community, singing for musical excellence and social change, fighting the good fight, and staying here as long as we can. Today, I am participating in the virtual cookbook fundraiser for Community Shares, and I'm going to share with you a family recipe. Uh, we in my house call it okra corn and tomatoes. Those are the stars, but it also has chicken. So it's essentially a chicken soup with vegetables. Uh, and the vegetables are, as is mentioned in the title, okra, corn, and tomatoes. And please do not be put off by the okra. Okra is not as scary as people think it is, but I'll get to that in a minute. So what I've done, the first thing I've done is you want to boil chicken. You wanna get a chicken that's about three or four pounds. You wanna get a whole chicken. And if you can't get a whole chicken, you can get it cut into pieces. But the key part here is that you wanna get chicken that's on the bone. The reason why you want to do that is that the bone is going to offer you some flavor, it's going to offer you a little bit of collagen to, for, for thickening, and it's also going to be a little bit more forgiving. When you're boiling chicken, you tend to, if you're not careful, you can easily overcook it and make it tough and rubbery. The bone is going to give you a little bit of cushion so that you can keep that juiciness. So you're going to boil your chicken for maybe about 20, 25 or so minutes once it's cut into pieces. Oh, I forgot to mention that. Once you get your whole chicken, uh, if you are uncomfortable or unable to cut the pieces yourself, you can just have your butcher do it. Um, if you don't have the whole chicken or can't access it, you can get pieces. You can get quarters, you can get thighs, but as I mentioned, bones are key. If bones freak you out, <laughs> like they do for a lot of people, you can get boneless pieces. Just be very careful that you don't overcook it. Um, you just want to cook it until it's just done. So it's reaching about 165 on your thermometer, which I know you have, right? Of course you do. So <clears throat> you want to boil your chicken for about 25 to 30 minutes. And once it's cool, you want to take it out. You want to keep your, this is the pot that it was cooked in. It has onions and garlic in it as well. And there is a recipe attached. So whatever, whatever I miss, you're going to be able to see it. This has onions and garlic in it. And once you've cooked your chicken, once it's cool, you just turn that heat off, take your, take your chicken and break it up. So you wanna remove the skin because the skin is just flabby and soft and awful. If you're used to fried chicken skin, which is fantastic and delicious, this is not that. This is cold and flabby and terrible. So you want to take that skin off and discard it. And once you get rid of the skin, then you wanna take the meat off the bones. You wanna make sure that you get any bones, any cartilage, any strange little pieces out. Cause all you want in your soup is that delicious, those delicious chicken pieces. So once the chicken is cooked, it comes off the bone pretty easily. So you can just pull and pull. So while, you're, while your chicken is boiling, what you want to do is get your tomatoes. This recipe calls for about a 28 ounce can of tomatoes. Here, we've got whole tomatoes here. You can also get diced tomatoes. Um, I would not recommend any tomatoes with flavorings like chili or peppers or anything like that. This is not a Southwestern soup. This is a very straightforward kind of chicken and veg. Um, you don't want a whole lot of extra flavors there. If you do want to add those flavors, you can add them later. But I would suggest tasting it in its original, in its original form, and then you can make the choice if you want to change your flavors later. So you want to get your tomatoes there. I've got corn here, and I've got okra over there. Now today I'm using canned tomatoes, and I'm using frozen corn and frozen okra. The beauty of this soup is that it's a fantastic summer soup. You've got chicken and it's using summer bounty. And I'm sure that there are some of you out there that are growing tomatoes. I would venture to say there's probably a lot of you out there growing tomatoes. 
So, and you probably have, by the end of the summer, a lot of tomatoes probably right alongside your cucumbers and zucchini. But right now we're focusing on the tomatoes. If you've got fresh tomatoes, you can certainly use those in the soup and those are gonna be in the recipe as well. This is also the season for farm fresh corn. No matter where you are, but especially in the Midwest, you're going to have a lot of farms that are growing corn. And this is the time to get it. You've got the, the silver queen and the bicolor corn. And even in the grocery stores, you can get some really delicious product right now. Uh, okra is also a hot weather vegetable. Now I mentioned okra earlier and how okra just, oops, excuse me. Okra gets kind of a bad rap. We here in the North, even though we are very, very Southern, <laughs> we as a Northern city, uh, don't really tend to use a lot of okra unless we or our families are from the South or from the Caribbean, from Southeast Asia or from Africa. Now, um, many of us, especially African American families whose introduction to the United States was in the Southern States, we tend to, tend to use many ingredients that are coming from the Caribbean and from Africa, including okra. The reason why okra gets such a bad rap is because it contains a mucilage that people like to refer to as slimy. <laughs> I promise you, this soup is not slimy. What people often did with that mucilage inside the okra is use it as a thickening agent. So what happens is once that okra is cooked, that sliminess goes away and that really beneficial mucilage that also has a ton of health components, helps to slightly thicken the soup and all that sliminess goes away and you're left with those beautiful little seeds, those little pops that when you bite it that go along with the corn that really makes this soup a lot more interesting than it looks like at first glance. So okra is your friend. Not only is it delicious, it has an incredible amount of health benefits, has a ton of vitamins, has folate, is really great for breastfeeding and pregnant women. It has a ton of any, any, any accidents, any, <laughs> any oxidants. Um, so okra is an overlooked vegetable. Um, and I think that once you have this soup, you will probably want to use it a little bit more than you had once before. So now if you take a look at this, the chicken that I had was about six pounds. So I use about half of it because that's a lot of chicken. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn my, turn my heat back on and because we want this to start boiling again and um, I'm going to break up my tomatoes. Now I'm going to get some more gloves because the tomatoes are quite juicy. Now as I mentioned earlier you can get diced tomatoes and it makes this a lot more of a quick process but if you get whole tomatoes not only are you going to get a little bit more juice you get to dictate how small or how big your pieces are. So if you like yours a little bit more chunky, you can just make your chunks a little bit bigger. If you like it smaller, you can get on in here and just get zen with your, <laughs> with your tomatoes and squeeze and break them up and make a mess. Um, it's also nice, especially right now, to just kind of get your hands into something and just, you know, it's kind of like making bread or rolling out pie dough. You get your hands in there and you get to actually touch your food. You get to kind of be one with it a little bit. So it doesn't take long. You know, you don't need scissors for this. You don't need a knife. You just need your hand. If you got clean hands, you can just put your hand in there too. But I tell you, that tomato stuff gets under your nails and it feels kind of grody. So, once you have this broken up nicely, all we do, I'm gonna add my okra to this, because the water's already hot, I'm gonna add my okra to it. I'm gonna add my tomatoes to it. And as I mentioned, this is hot didn't look hot just then, did it? <laughs> it's hot though. So we're gonna let that boil a little bit because the okra is frozen um, and the tomatoes, 
Tomatoes don't need a whole lot of cooking because they've been canned, so they've been processed by heat. But what you want to do is you just want to let those kind of get together a little bit. The chicken is already in pieces. And with the chicken, you can either, once you take it off the bone, you can chop it up with a knife. You can just kind of shred it with your hands. And again, just like the tomatoes, you can determine how chunky you want that. If you like your chicken soup with nice big chunks that you can chew on, then have at it. If you would rather have it so that it's all kind of around the same size, you can chop it up fine. Um, you can shred it like a, like a pulled chicken. It's all up to you. And another reason why I like using whole chicken is that you've got a combination of white and dark meat. White meat tends to get super, super dry, even when it's, when it's cooked carefully. Um, dark meat, you've got a little bit more fat, a little bit more flavor, and a little bit of a texture difference also. You want a little bit of a, you want to make this soup interesting and exciting. Um, let's see, what now? So we're gonna put our chicken in. I'm going to let that come to a little bit of a boil, and then I'm going to add my corn, and then I'm going to season it with some salt and pepper. So I mentioned that this was a recipe that came down through my family. I remember my great-grandmother making it, uh, and then as a teenager, my grandmother was making it. Uh, I don't remember my mom making it. Actually, I don't think she liked okra. <laughs> I'm not positive about that, but I don't remember her making it. Um, but now I make it. Um, I have an uncle who makes it, and it's just one of those... It's a throw together recipe and I mentioned that if you are someone who grows summer vegetables, it's a great way to use up your bounty. It's a great way to, uh, when you get your goodies from the farmer's market, it's a great way to use that. And it's also the kind of soup that even once you have that, if you want to add other vegetables, if you've got a bumper crop of zucchini, if you've got, uh, you can add beans to it, you can add all kinds of things to it. It's a very, very simple base. But there's something about that combination of okra and corn and tomatoes with chicken that is fantastic. If you want to add an even bigger shortcut to it, you are more than welcome to use rotisserie chicken and start with chicken broth. You can, you know, it's, it's, it can be as easy or as complex as you like, but even at its most complex, it's not that complex. Because when you use fresh vegetables, you want to make sure your tomatoes are peeled. You can easily peel those by sticking them under the broiler for a little bit so the skin comes right off and you can still do the same thing. Your corn, it's a matter of cutting the kernels off the cob and okra is as simple as getting the little caps, cutting the caps off, cutting the tails off, cutting them up and throwing them in the, in the pot. It's as easy as pie, but that flavor will surprise you and hopefully will delight you. So I've got all of my ingredients in my pan. I'm bringing it to a little bit of a boil. I'm going to add some salt. And you can add salt or pepper to taste. If you're someone that needs to go easy on the salt, then start from zero and add it as you need it. I like mine with a little bit of pepper and I also like mine with a little bit of hot sauce. It's always nice. Serve it up with some cornbread and you've got a fantastic summer soup. So, Thank you for watching and uh, happy singing. Thank you for Community Shares for doing this cookbook and uh, peace and safety. Thank you.